Hello, welcome to the Examining Paragon Pathfinder LSP Details Learning Byte. I'm Gordon with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. Let's get started. After completing this learning byte, you will be able to examine MPLS LSP details using the Paragon Pathfinder interface. Paragon Pathfinder uses a web-based interface. It's actually part of the Paragon Automation suite of applications. And inside of this interface, I can view the LSPs that have been discovered on my network. This is a very simple six-node network. We'll use in this example, there are three label switch paths that are present. These paths are dynamically discovered by Paragon Pathfinder using a protocol called PSEP the Path Computation Element Protocol, and very, very detailed information about the status of the LSPs on your network is collected. I can see that, for example, this LSP, the originating node, the MPLS ingress router is VMX1, the tunnel terminates on the VMX2 node, and I can see the amount of bandwidth that's reserved and tunnel status. And so I want you to just, in, as part of this learning byte, be able to use this interface to kind of view detailed MPLS LSP tunnel information. So I'm going to connect to an administrative desktop and we'll view this interface now. This is the Paragon Automation User Interface that Paragon Pathfinder uses. These are the same three tunnels I was showing you in the PowerPoint slide. If you select a tunnel, you can view the tunnel path in the topology map. I can see the nodes that, you know, the ingress, the egress nodes, the arrows kind of tell me that the ingress and the, and the tunnel flow, the nodes that are involved, what links are involved. You know, here's the, the, the nodes, the, the amount of bandwidth. This tunnel has 200 megs of bandwidth reserved. This is a device control label switch path. That means Paragon Pathfinder doesn't actually control the properties of this tunnel. This MPLS LSP is actually configured in VMX1's local configuration file. So Paragon Pathfinder doesn't really control this LSP. All the settings are defined here, but it does discover it, and it does display detailed information about that discovered label switched path. I can see setup priorities, hold priorities. So that's just general tunnel information. Now, what I can do is I can click uh, there's a little detail icon that appears once you mouse over it. Selecting that opens up a, a separate window. I'm going to click on the Details tab. I'm not gathering any traffic statistics for this tunnel. And this is the detailed information about this selected label switch path that was discovered using PSEP, the Path Computation Element Protocol. So this, I've made this tunnel as long as possible. I, I configured you know, static routing of this tunnel you know, strict routing, I should say, of this tunnel across this network. And, and so I can see the ingress node. This is the loopback IP address of the VMX1 node. And there's a couple of different options that I can view here. See, there's how you plan. You know, I, I, again, this tunnel is statically configured in the VMX1 configuration. It is a strictly routed tunnel, so the explicit route object that was calculated then used by RSVP to signal this tunnel across the network. You know, there's one, two, three, four, five strict hops that have been configured. I can view, you know, the planned properties. Hey, the first step in the tunnel forwarding process would be to forward it to this IP address, which is actually on VMX3. And then you can literally follow the tunnel path across the network. Now, this is the plan. It, and things always go as planned, correct? Now, the plan may be a little bit different than the actual live way this tunnel is forwarded across the network currently because of network conditions, right? I can see the metric uh, for this particular LSP, what, met what metrics are used to calculate the shortest path for this tunnel across the network. The default is the shortest path according to the traffic engineering database, the IGP traffic engineering database. Um, you can route based on delay. You can be route based on actual mileage. It's very flexible. Um, but here's the actual live record route object. So the, it's the same information that was viewed in the planned output, but this is actually how this traffic is, uh, or this LSP is, is routing traffic across the network on a on a hop by hop basis. Remember this label switch path has 200 megs of, of bandwidth reserve. I can see the setup priority and the hold priority for this. 
here's the this tunnel terminates on the VMX2 node. This is the uh, loopback IP address or the IP address assigned to the loopback interface on VMX2. This is a, a PCC controlled label switch path. It, in the output here, you'll see it as device controlled, as we mentioned earlier. That means again that Paragon Pathfinder actually discovered this label switch path, but it doesn't have the ability to control it. Path computation client actually controls the properties of this LSP. Okay. And so the, the name of the path, you know, the nodes that are present. And again, all of this information is dynamically discovered. I don't have to populate these fields. This data is discovered using the path computation element protocol. So all of these values you traditionally would see using something like a show MPLS LSP detail, right? You, hey, this here's how much bandwidth, here's setup priorities, hold priorities, the actual record route object. We've always had this in the Juno CLI, but Paragon Automation can automatically discover that same information for you using PSEP and display it to you in an easy to use web-based interface. In this learning by, we use the Paragon Pathfinder interface to examine detailed information about MPLS LSPs. Thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.